Yeah, okay. Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for this weekend's UFC main event between Jairzinho Rosenstreich and Augusto Sakai. Okay. Before I get into this, I'm I'm going to I'm going to let you know I'm a little concerned this might be a really slow-paced 25 minutes. And I'm preempting that because usually when we jinx heavyweight fights and say there no way they're going to be out the first round, we normally get 25 minutes. So I, I have a feeling this might be a really slow-paced kickboxing match. Um, in which I give Jairzinho an, an advantage. That doesn't mean Sakai can't win this fight. It's about volume. He's, he's got to throw more than Rosenstrike because he's probably not going to land as much um, as far as as far as far percentage-wise. Um, if we just look at their stats, so Rosenstrike's 11-2, and two, uh, Sakai's 15-2-1. and one. Um, Average fight time slightly less for Rosenstrike at 9-22. Uh, uh, Height and reach is much of a muchness. There's only an inch in it in both sides. They're both orthodox. We see the differences when it comes to their their stats, striking and grappling. So um, Rosenstrike's got a lower rate of striking compared to Sakai by, by quite a lot, especially for a heavyweight. 5.32's a lot. Um, he does take, take a few more uh, strikes per minute, but he's also got a better defense. And he's going to need the defense against Rosenstrike. Because although... Uh, although Sakai's got knockouts on his record, it, they're volume knockouts. He's not he's not knocking people dead like uh, like Rosenstrike did against uh, Arlovsky or Overeem. There's another good example, and that's that's a good example of first round power and fifth round power. That power's there all the way through the fight for Rosenstrike, and he only needs to connect once to really do some damage. Sakai is the one that's got to. He's got to add a bit more volume behind it. It's not not that he can't hurt Rosenstrike, but it's not going to be the first punch. It'll be the fourth or fifth. Or if he's able to get him backed up against the fence where he can get his hands on him and break his posture and bring him down to a knee, bring him to a tool or a weapon that's more powerful than a punch, which which might be a, a smart thing to do. I mean, you know, you look at the Chase Sherman fight, you look at the Marcin Tibora fight, and the, the turning point in both of those fights was was when they really closed distance down. Um, one thing I will say about Sakai, which is very good, is he, he's got a very long jab, and he doesn't really move like a heavyweight. Even though he is a he is a big dude, I mean, he's right at the top of the weight class at two sixty five. He he's got a nice snapping jab, and because he, he's not overly muscled, um, you know, his he, his hands don't move quite at the same pace as a heavyweight, but they also don't land with the same power as a heavyweight. My, my concern for for Sakai in this one is that he knows he's got to close Rosen strike down who's quite happy to hang back and counter punch when he's got someone aggressive in front of him and Sakai is going to go charging forward with that jab and he's going to get caught with that counter left hook I also am not sure whether Sakai is going to be able to take Rosen strike down so uh, Rosen strike's got 80 percent takedown defense um compared to takedown accuracy of 50 percent for for uh, uh for Sakai but again persistence is key you know he might only land half of his takedowns but if he tries twice as much he's going to land twice as many i mean you know it, it's it's basic maths but the the pressure accumulation is something that makes the big difference if he's able to uh, force um rosen strike to work at a pace which is not comfortable for him he might be able to start creating cracks in that takedown defense and actually get him to the floor eventually you know without with failing a few times <clears throat> If he hits the floor, you've got to expect him to be able to control and ground and pound from there. I mean, Sakai's a big dude to have on top of you. He's a brown belt Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so he's going to be able to manage and manipulate the person underneath him very well. Um, and, you know, heavyweight power on the feet is heavyweight power on the ground as well. And still the same thing with 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 volume. He's got to land a lot. When it comes to Rosenstrike, the, the, the challenge for him in this fight is if Sakai is timid after his last loss. I don't think Rosenstrike will be, will be timid because it was a frustrating fight for him where he just wasn't able to get his hands on his opponent. Um, whereas Sakai was, you know, he was taken down, he was beaten up. Cyril Gam was in and out of range. That's not something that I feel like Sakai can do. He might have quick hands, but I don't think his feet are quite as quick as Cyril Gam's. Um, and, and I also feel like if you think Rosenstrike's just come off that that five fives of not being able to get to Cyril Gann and being quite frustrated, now he's fighting someone that is going to be more hittable and he's going to want to hit them more. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's one of the benefits of coming off a frustrated loss is that you take that frustration into the next fight with you uh, as fuel. Um, 
So that's something you've got to consider with, with Jairzinho. I think he might up his pace. I think he might up his aggression a little bit. And then as long as he doesn't get a timid Sakai who's kind of holding back and not wanting to engage, he's probably going to run him, run him onto something. I mean, the, the kickboxing experience of, of Rosenstrike is pretty, pretty impre- incredible. 85 fights, 76 wins, 8 losses. Of his 76 wins, he's got 64 knockouts, which is a massive percentage. Compared to, you know, I mean, we, you know, look at someone who's a more precise striker like Adesanya, who's got a very similar kickboxing experience, you know, around, I think he's 75 and 5 with 29 knockouts. You can see the, the difference in effectiveness of punching power. Still with that experience, though, comes a lot of, of uh, a, a lot of, um, understanding of range, of 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 uh, variety of techniques, and of how to set traps and and set people up. And Sakai is a good tie boxer. You know, he's got good movement and and good knees, good clinch work. But I just I have to lean towards uh, Rosenstruck with the experience that he's got and with the effectiveness of his punching power. Um, what else haven't I said? <clears throat> I mean. If it hits the floor, I'd be very surprised if Sakai, even with his brown belt, goes for a submission. He's not got any submission wins on his record. Um, and it might be a waste of time. He might just find himself exhausting himself when he could use that energy to, to ground and pound. Um, and the longer he spends in top position, the, you know, the more effective he's going to be there and the more tired Rosenstrike is going to be. So like I said, if, if Sakai works for a takedown and fails a couple of times, as long as he's not discouraged and keeps working for it, he'll probably get it eventually due to fatigue. Um, but the real danger is in running onto something, <laughs> something really powerful. I, I think this might be a bit of a slow fight. I think it might be quite a technical one, but it wouldn't surprise me if we get a knockout in the later rounds. If Sakai's, you know, just been outpointed a little bit in the first few rounds and feels like he needs to make up the distance and he goes running onto something. And the, 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 sh- the sniping, the sharp punching of Rosenstrike is, is something that's going to be able to find holes in Sakai's guard. I very much feel, even if he's attacking. I think that's everything. Enjoy the fights, and I'll see you next time.